morning and a very warm welcome to you all. Please be seated. To you all in church and to those watching the recording, may I wish you all a happy and healthy New Year. It may be difficult to say Happy New Year when we are still suffering from the pandemic, a time of the unknown, confusion, hurt, pain and anxiety. But as we move into a new year, help us to see this with a new vision, one of hope, joy and love. God's love, the love within us and the love we have for others. The love that we have in our relationships <coughs> with others, strangers, family, friends and loved ones. Which leads me very nicely into the next part of our service, where I would like to ask Anne to come and publish the bands of marriage. I published the bands of marriage between Thomas George Joseph Bond, single, of the parish of St Thomas Brampton, and Nazim Joanna Sadiq, single, also at St Saviour Stockport. This is for the second time of asking, if any of you know any reason in law why they might, may not marry each other, you are to declare it. And let's hope and pray that the wedding is able to take place in February. <laughs> now with only six guests, but at least at the moment it can take place.
the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The three kings look and search for the newborn king. Help us to find Jesus in our hearts. Help us to use our eyes to look for the signs of Jesus. Help us to use our ears to hear his good news and our minds to be open to his word. Create up to heavens who may pray by our son to worship the Christ child. Guide us and save us that we may find our journey's end in Jesus Christ our Father. We are sorry that sometimes we are blinkered and therefore do not see or follow the signs. We are sorry that sometimes we are preoccupied and do not listen. We are sorry that sometimes we do our own thinking and do not follow Jesus' teaching. Help us to look, hear and listen and follow your teaching as disciples of Christ. Absolution and the collect for the day. Grant, we beseech you, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A God who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now hear Sarah read from the prophet Isaiah, contrasting the wonderful new day of light that is coming with the night of great darkness that this world must pass through to get there. First reading is from Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness is the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Nephar. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. For the gift of his holy word. Thanks be to God. God. And so the wise men came. Thank you, sir. Following the bright star which moved slowly across the skies to Bethlehem. The journey would have taken weeks, and so they would have camped out in the desert and slept in the starlight. They carried gifts for the king they expected to meet. And although they may have been surprised by the lonely surroundings, they recognised the king whose birth had been announced by the star. They were overwhelmed with joy to have found him at last, and laid down their precious gifts and worshipped him. In a moment we're going to hear Andrew Rosser tell the story of this in Matthew's Gospel. 
But first, Andrew will play We Three Kings of Orient Are. And during this carol, the um, wise men and the camel figures will be brought up to the altar. Gospels take from uh, Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, 
in Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from him shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over a place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of Christ. Is the wheel. And I don't know if you've seen it, but basically there's celebrities, it's a bit like Trivial Pursuits, and there's celebrities who are so-called specialists on subjects. And they did a bit of a Christmas special and they spin the celebrities and you answer a question and a celebrity can help you. Um, and they had a celebrity vicar, um, Reverend Sarah Coslett, I think her name is, apparently a celebrity vicar. And she was on there, and they also had various other celebrities. And one of these special um, topics to answer questions on was the nativity. And it spun, and um, they didn't get the specialist. They actually got Alexander Armstrong. <laughs> and everybody said, oh, he'll know all about it. And this was the question. Which of these events, commonly included in nativity plays, is specifically mentioned in the Bible? And before they showed you the options, they were going, oh, this is going to be easy. And they had A, Mary riding a donkey, B, Jesus born in a stable, C, three kings bearing gifts, and D, angel visiting shepherds. And again, there's a lot of discussion between the two parts of it. And if you saw it, you'd have known what happened. And my children said, oh, oh. And the people went, oh, all of them, they're all of them. They said, well, there must be a trick here. So they first of all immediately said, three kings bearing gifts, that's absolutely mentioned. Oh, it's mentioned in more than one story in the Bible, is what they said. And obviously, I won't need to tell everybody who's at church today, the correct answer is, the only one that is specifically mentioned in the Bible is angels visiting shepherds. Never says anything about Mary riding on a donkey, Nothing about Jesus being born in a stable. Um, nothing and not three kings, just kings or magi or wise men bearing gifts. It's just we assume because three gifts are mentioned, although in Isaiah only two gifts are mentioned. So I thought today we could look at the part of the story with the wise men, the magi. Sometimes if you look it up, they say it could possibly be women. Okay, so we don't know who these people were. But 2,000 years ago, the Jewish people were waiting for a leader, a Messiah, to save them. They thought that Messiah would come just for them. They thought he would come with a big show of power and might. But the story of Jesus that unfolds is one where we begin to realise that Jesus is a bigger king than anyone ever guessed. And a very different kind of king. A king who says to each and every human person that it's all about you. This morning we've heard again the story in Matthew of their journey and the arrival of the wise men following a bright star. But who were these wise men? 
The wise men or kings or magi were probably very wise and mathematically adept astrologers and religious scholars. They knew about the Old Testament prophecy that a new king would be born of the family of David. Most likely they'd been watching the heavens for years, waiting for alignment that would foretell the birth of this king. When they identified a powerful set of astrological portents, they decided the time was right to find, set out to find the prophesied leader. Now anything very unusual was considered an omen, so the star must have been both very rare and visually spectacular, and it would have had a very, very clear message for the Magi. But what was this strange bright star? which travelled slowly across the east, third to the sky from the east, and stood still over Bethlehem. Now there are many different theories about, about what this star could have been. Astronomers suggest that what the Bible describes as a star may actually have been a comet. And Chinese astronomers in 5 BC recorded a long-tailed comet which blazed across the sky for 70 days. And perhaps it was a comet which led the wise men to Jesus. Some of you may be aware that recently in the night sky, there's been a great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, where the two planets appeared closer to one another and brighter than they have in 800 years. I actually downloaded an app for my phone so I could see where I was meant to be looking. Um, and I could, with binoculars, I could see, I could have done with a telescope, I could see two bright lights very close together, but not actually as close as I could have seen them. So another explanation of the star over Bethlehem is that the wise men saw a conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn. But with the two planets coming close together in the sky three times over a very short period of time. And this would have been a signal of something very significant. Another theory is that the star was light from the birth of a new star or a nova. Or perhaps there is no explanation for this. It was clearly a miracle, a sign sent. Whatever your theory is, it led the wise men and the magi in the very familiar story, or the story we think is familiar, that we've heard today. Um, Going back to the Michael McIntyre, it did make me think at the time, how well do we know this story? I was surprised that my children didn't know all the details. Um, I said, you must know that. How many times have you done this? And, you know, obviously the celebrities, relatively intelligent celebrities, didn't know this either. Obviously the celebrity vicar did. Um, but I think... It, it, you know, we know some details, and I think as long as we've got the story in our hearts, um, then it, it gives us something to focus on. So whatever the theory is, it led the wise men. We know about the wise men or Magi who followed the star, a long journey through the desert, precious gifts, and a baby in a manger. But if we look more closely at each of these things, that may help us to think about what this story means for us. Now Epiphany, it's about light. It's about the light of Christ coming to the world. And the wise men followed the star, a bright light, which led them to Jesus. So how might we follow the light of Jesus in our lives? First of all, the wise men didn't spot the star by accident. They had spent a lifetime studying the skies and paying close attention to what they saw. We need to pay attention to God if we're to follow where he wants to lead us. We don't need binoculars, we don't need a telescope for this, but perhaps what we do need to do is to pray and to study the Bible a bit more. So this is the first thing we can learn from the wise men. We need to pay attention to God in our lives. Now for the wise men, following the star meant undertaking a long journey. We may have lived in the same place all our lives. We may have done a lot of travelling. We may be travelling in the future, moving to different parts of the world. 
probably not during the pandemic, but perhaps in years to come. But wherever we live, Jesus calls us on a spiritual journey of growth and change. He said, I am the way, not I am the destination. Following him means leaving some of our old ways behind and being open to new experiences which may change us. This is the second thing we can learn from the wise men. We are called to go on a journey of faith. Now the wise men didn't go to Jesus empty-handed. The Bible tells us that they opened their treasure chests and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And the gifts they presented reflected both who this baby was and what he had come to earth to do. Gold was a gift fit for a king. And Jesus would prove to be not only the king of the Jews, but the king of kings and lord of lords. Frankincense was used by priests in making sacrifice to God. And this baby would prove to be the great high priest whose sacrifice of himself would reconcile all people, Jews and Gentiles, to God. Myrrh was used for embalming the dead and reveals that this newborn king was born to die. Like the generous wise men bearing gifts, we too need to be prepared to give generously of our time, our energy, our resources and ourselves. Following Jesus is not without cost. And this is the third thing we can learn from the wise men. We need to be generous. As the wise men followed the special star, they must have wondered where they would find the newborn king. Would he be in a palace surrounded by royal guards? Would he be lying on silks and velvet? When the star stopped over Bethlehem, the Bible tells us they were overwhelmed with joy. Not just a bit happy, overwhelmed. And it made me think a little bit of when we went outside on Christmas Day and sang carols outside. It, and I, I've said to a couple of the mums of the, um, the girls who sang, um, it brought tears to my eyes. I felt overwhelmed with joy when we sang those carols on Christmas Day. Um, so the wise men were overwhelmed with joy, but they found him lying on straw in an animal's feeding trough. Some, we're not sure on the details of that story, but basically we know Jesus was under the age of two, as Herod was killing babies under the age of two, to try and find this Messiah. And Andrew's reading said he was found in a house, and it may be they'd moved into slightly better surroundings, but basically it was no palace. And this is the most important thing we can learn from the wise men. We can meet Jesus in surprising and unexpected places. So let's hope when we do that we recognise him so that we too can be overwhelmed with joy. Amen. silence is to reflect on the words that God has said. wish to and you're able to please stand for the affirmation of the faith. We affirm our faith together as a community, uniting ourselves to all Christians in the past, present 
and future. We believe in God the Father. From whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who inspires us with the power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers of intercession. light in our lives. The response to the Lord is my light is in him I trust. The gift of gold makes us think of wealth and power. We pray today for all those in the world who make decisions that affect other people, for those who lead in this country and in our world. Help them to remember that power and authority is not about them, it is about working towards love and justice for everyone. Guide our government and those of all nations as they deal with the challenges presented by the coronavirus pandemic. We pray that politicians and scientists will work together to ensure people in all nations are protected from the virus in the months ahead. The Lord is my light, in him I trust. The gift of frankincense makes us think of worship and the life of the church. We thank God for all those who brought the good news of Jesus to us and all who nourish our faith today. We pray that you will guide Reverend Sarah, Reverend Janet and Kate in their ministry. We thank you for the service and ministry of Bernard. We thank you for all the former rectors, vicars and readers at Old Brampton Church and our sister churches and pray for them as they continue to serve you in their new roles and endeavours. We thank you for the people, parents, teachers, friends, who introduced us to a life of faith. We pray that our church will be a place of welcome to all, and that God will help us to be brave in sharing the good news of love to everyone around us. The Lord is my light. In him I trust. The gift of myrrh reminds us of times of sadness and suffering. We pray for all those who are struggling with life. We remember in our prayers all who are suffering as a direct or indirect consequence of the pandemic, for those who are ill or anxious or homeless. We thank you for the practical demonstration of your love that so many provide by caring for the vulnerable. This year has shown us how many people put themselves, others before themselves, either by volunteering or working in the health and care services, often for minimal financial reward. We pray that those who care for the sick will have the strength to continue. We pray for healing and wholeness, peace of mind and hope. The Lord is my light, in him I trust. We thank God for all who have reached the end of their earthly journey of faith, that they may be welcomed in your eternity. We remember in particular those who helped us on our own journeys of faith and those who have served us here in this church, including Richard and Jim. We remember Molly Fenwick, whose funeral took place recently, and all those in our year's mind. Roy Baston, John Grieve, Michael Bridden, Raymond White, Eric Barry, William Taylor, Frank Hughes, Elsie Farrow, Derek Cheatham, and Roma Hancock. We pray for those who mourn 
and pray that your light will guide them and bring them peace. The Lord is my light, in him my trust. We give thanks that we've been included in the love of God and invited to follow Jesus. We pray that we will have the courage to be faithful every day and to share that love within our families, workplaces, schools and communities. Lord, you are our light. May we follow you faithfully, trusting that you will lead us. The Lord is my light. In the name of Jesus. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us to say our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
say the words of the dismissal together. Lord, surround us with your love as we go through this act of worship. Let lips that suffer your praise always speak the truth, and the ears that have heard your word always listen to your will. Give us a grace to work for the coming of your kingdom here on earth. For the glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I realise that one of the problems and difficulties of the coronavirus is wearing the mask. Wearing the mask, taking the mask off, trying not to flick a hearing aid into a congregation, trying to demiss, does bring difficulties to us. And one of them was I noticed that I didn't give us enough time to pass the peace on to each other. I realised we can't do that by hand, or by cuddles, or by hugs. So <coughs> apologies, but you didn't have time to pass it on by hand, by waving, or by bringing the peace to each other. So perhaps I'll give you some time now, my apologies. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. May I thank you all for coming, those joining us online and everyone who has taken part in today's service. Just a couple of things I would like to add in at this point is because we are in tier four, we are very fortunate that we are continually allowed to worship in church buildings, but we have to adapt. Some of the ways of adapting in Tier 4 is not to congregate outside the church, so at the end of the service I will disappear into the vestry. I will come out again, but I won't come outside, uh, which will discourage, um, unfortunately, will discourage me talking and finding out more about how you are, who you are, and I notice we have some unfamiliar faces to me in the congregation. So can I suggest that on the service book there are names and telephone numbers so I would like to contact you so if you could give me a ring and we'll catch up over the phone and over the email. It is important that we keep to the rules and it is important that we keep safe and well. Another way of adapting is that the Reverend Sarah Culver sends her apologies, but because of adapting to COVID, it doesn't seem right and appropriate to come to Old Brampton and then go straight into a congregation at Barlow. So our patterns of worship and who is going to be doing the services may vary over the next coming weeks. Our apologies that you might want to see more with Sarah and more of other ministers and the opportunity to have Holy Communion. But at the moment we are continually adapting. There will be a service here every week, but at the moment it's not clear what those patterns of worship will be. So please pray for Sarah and pray for all those in ministry who are trying to continue to give you the worship that you need in these difficult times. As we follow the light of Christ, help us to see how that light can burn inside us and shine for others to see. Amen. Let us stand and say the words of grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.